Hey everyone, today we are looking at a Sega Nomad and an official travel pouch, both considered unicorns. The Sega Nomad is essentially a portable Sega Genesis, and then as well as hooking up to your TV. Taking a look at the, uh, the pouch here, uh, it's basically nylon material with Velcro. There is no zipper, but it's pretty cool, very retro, old school style. Now, for the folks that have never seen it before or don't know too much about it, uh, this is uh, Sega's third entry into the portable market at the time. The first one was the Sega Game Gear, released in 1990, and then released in 1994 only for the commercial Japanese airlines. There was a Sega Mega Jet, which was a console with built-in controls but no screen. So technically, it was only provided for the flyers so they could play games while looking at the screen or the monitor located on the back of the seats as we have it today. Uh, later, they did release it to the general public for retail purchase though. Uh, this travel pouch has a buckle, as you can tell here. Um, pretty straightforward, nothing fancy. Uh, it's definitely well padded. Here's a look at the box itself. Uh, it's very uh, reminiscent of the Genesis uh, packaging that you later see in the life cycle where there's like a red strip on the left side very uh, very very stylized and stylish uh, topography which is pretty cool so here are some of the uh, games that were being advertised on the packaging here now the uh, Sega Nomad was released back on October 1995, only in USA for 180 bucks. So this technically came out towards the end of the life cycle. So at the time, there were tons of games on the Genesis. So th this was a pretty cool way to play all your games that you may have already had, but on the go. Uh, it did eat up batteries, but overall it was pretty, uh, pretty cool to take this with you wherever you went, whether you school or traveling with your family or or just friends house it's pretty cool so here we are unboxing the uh, the console now I don't know if my set is complete um, like I know my console accessories are complete but I'm talking about like my paperwork I, I, I think I'm missing one or two pamphlets but we will go over it as, uh, as, as uh, um, I unbox it here. So. so I just wanna share what this brown box looks like on all angles. So it's a clamshell style box, which is cool. Here's a, a little baggie of the instruction manual here the console and the battery pack. So take a look at this first. This is a little insert, I guess, when it was first opened. Uh, I guess there was some type of screen protector or something on the front, or you know, just to prevent scratches during shipment. This is a fold out very large uh, instruction manual, just going over the basic stuff like battery, hookup, controller, um, TV, whatever. So let's just take a look real quick at some of the um, parts of the manual here. So here it's basically the uh, illustration. Controls, functions, uh, button layout, The top of the console with the cartridge slot, power button, the AV out, controller port, which is only for player two, unfortunately. Battery pack requires six double A's, different power sources, car adapter, AC adapter, and then if you want to play on the TV. Or well, technically, you don't really need to hook it up to the TV for second player. You would just be both you and your friend would be hovering over a tiny screen. <laughs> now here's a TV slash VCR hookup. And then 
VHF hookup, troubleshooting, specifications. Yeah, so that's the manual. Now I think I'm missing the registration card and a poster, I think. But overall, I'm pretty happy with what I was able to at least have in this set. This is the uh, battery pack here. It requires a mass of six AA batteries, which back in the 80s was pretty expensive. And technically today, they're still expensive. So what I do is I just use rechargeable AA batteries just to preserve you know, cost and whatnot. I thought this unit right here was for extra battery life on your console where the console had built-in battery already. No, the, the, the console doesn't even have battery inside, which is too bad. You, you need this if you want to even play portably on your Nomad. So I will demonstrate later with this being added to the back of the console, but for now, let's just take a look at everything, what comes in the box. Here's the console itself. I think overall the condition is pretty, pretty nice considering it's like, I don't know, 30 years old or more. Uh, this is a third party glass screen that I recently replaced it with. The original uh, screen glass was really bad, so scratched up that I, I removed it and I replaced it with a better one. Very, uh, very happy with how it turned out. Here's a top panel. There's a D-pad on the side. Which, by the way, the, the Circle D-pad is pretty, pretty responsive. I'm surprised how well it responds and how comfortable that is. The front six buttons. The bottom volume, player two port, and the contrast button, which you will need to finagle with quite often to get the best contrast based on the game. As you can tell, this thing is literally a square brick. Uh, it's kind of heavy. It's like two pounds or so. You can definitely knock somebody out with this. It's, it's, yeah, or you can build building with this brick, uh, masonry brick. It's pretty funny, the shape of it. It is kind of at a slant if you look closely. The bottom is straight, but the top kind of arches down a little bit. I guess just a design aesthetic so I could chose for this design. Even though this is a square shaped um, console, it's actually pretty comfortable. Yeah, I'm surprised. Its ergonomics is pretty good. Kind of heavy, but overall it, 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 it handles it pretty well. So real quick, I just want to show you what this looks like when you insert six AA batteries. Uh, it basically just slots in six, and then you would just hang it on the back of the uh, console. There are four grooves, technically three, and then one circuitry connector. Uh, you insert it and slide it down for it to connect. Uh, as if the second Nomad wasn't already heavy, now you make it even heavier <laughs> with the battery attached. It literally looks like a Ghostbuster backpack which is, makes it even more just retro. It's so boxy and heavy, it's funny. Yeah, so here's a look at the battery pack. So here's the official Sega Nomad carry pouch. Pretty straightforward pouch, uh, very well padded, pretty thick actually. Uh, there's three compartments, one for your console, uh, front, portion for accessories games and the back portion for another set of games or accessories or you know, battery pack. So here I'm going to demonstrate uh, putting in some items in it just to showcase uh, what it could all carry as a potential setup. So of course the top portion would be just for the console. It's actually pretty spacious. Uh, it's not a tight fit. Uh, I could probably fit in maybe some instruction manuals as well. Uh, the back side, I'm just going to put in my uh, battery pack as you see here, but I can definitely put in more stuff in there. And in the front, um, I'm going to put in just two of my games in it. I could probably put four, two on the bottom, two on the top, but I didn't want to put 
two mini games because it could possibly scratch the artwork by cramming into the game. So I felt two would be good. And plus, who who really plays four games while traveling, right? I mean, usually one one or two games should keep you busy. So here we have Midnight Resistance and uh, Rebel Cop versus Terminator as examples. Pretty nice fit. Very cool. Very cool. For our first demo game we are going to play today, Midnight Resistance. Uh, this is a 1989 release from Data East, originally an arcade port. Uh, this Sega Genesis version actually was ported pretty well, except that it's only one player game. Overall, everything was pretty pretty good in terms of just you know how close it plays the arcade. Uh, now the arcade version, the joystick, the the directional gun that you shoot is dependent on the joystick itself. So it, it was a rotational joystick, but of course we can't achieve that on the home D-pad. So what Data East did for the home port was they made a lock-on button where you would uh, hold down the button to keep shooting in the direction you're holding or let go to shoot in the direction that you're facing. So as you can see here, I'm walking back and forth. Um, this is the uh, Data Aces version of, I guess you could say Contra, which they pretty much ripped off pretty bad because even the power-ups are very similar, rapid fire, spread shot. Um, uh, the only thing though that Contra doesn't have, at least not yet when this was re released, is that this game also has secondary weapons like napalm grenades, uh, super amplified power attacks. It's kind of like Contra but super exaggerated. Uh, I love this game. It's so fun. Uh, it's pretty, for the most part, it's pretty easy too. Um, the game, you can probably beat the whole game in like, I don't know. 40 minutes or so, maybe less actually, if you're speed running, of course, but this game, it's it's so good. I wish there was a modern port. I know there, there's an arcade collection on the Evercade, but I wish there was one on the Switch uh, eShop or something, because eShop on the Switch is pretty big, but except this game is not on there for some unknown reason. This is cool, the weapon room, all the guns, flamethrower, full auto, spread, bullets, nitro. This next game is Ghostbusters. This was produced and published by Sega themselves. So it has a pretty good, it's a, at least in my opinion, a good uh, quality finish to it. While the, it's not like the most amazing game out there, it does have a couple memorable moments. Uh, specifically, uh, you get to choose the order of levels that you play. Uh, in this case, the levels are basically like mansions, buildings, or houses, whatever. Uh, the residents are calling in, reporting paranormal activity, and you get to go chase down the ghost. And each, of course, the different house, you get different money. You actually you earn money as well to upgrade your your proton pack guns and weaponry, and you can even buy f uh, food, which is cool because most games back in the day you just run a gun like Contra, but here at least you know there's some type of you know gameplay, replay value where you get to kind of change around your weapon power ups and stuff. I do want to preface this game, it is not very easy, it's actually quite challenging. It doesn't really follow the, the movie or the cartoon very closely, but it's still fun, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's also, one thing you will notice here, there's only three, there's Peter, Raymond, and Egon, but you don't see Winston. For some reason, Winston was not included back in the day. But there's actually a fan-made cartridge, this, I think it's Ghostbusters Special Edition or something, where they, I guess they kind of um, uh, uh, made a sprite for Winston. And you, you can get that now. Uh, if you look at eBay, and I think they have a direct website. I can't re remember the name, but I'll, I'll put a link down in the description. Anyways, uh, it'll enable Winston and I think uh, save points as well. Or password because this game doesn't even have a password either. It's a it's an entire sit down playthrough. You can't save it, and it's it's not something that at least in my opinion that you're gonna be able to finish in one sitting. So that's unfortunate. But at least the special edition that the fan made version made, they enabled uh, I think save points or, or or password enablement. So 
So this is the first house here. Uh, basically, it's like a, um, I don't think it's a hotel. I think it's just a house actually. But uh, yeah, so you, as you can see here, see here, there is some platforming. There is some uh, jumping around. I do want to also preface the controls are not as, probably as tight as possible. I wish it was a little bit tighter. Um, the enemies, unfortunately, do have some cheap shots sometimes, and some some of the bosses are kind of hard to figure out what their pattern is or what their like weak points are. The enemy placement is kind of cheap too, but in general, I think it's a good pickup if you can find it relatively cheap. It's not a cheap game though. This this at the time ran me I think 110 bucks, uh, but in general, this game I think is still probably worth that price. I know it's you know it's expensive for what it is, but in terms of what it is, I think it's worth it. Not many good uh, you know movie franchise games were produced back in the, the day, but this is an exception. Okay, now this game is crazy. Not only are the sprites pretty big for a Genesis game. The graphics, the animation, the, even the, the spoken audio is amazing this game. Uh, I don't know, this is just one of those games that like stood out very well. It's pretty brutal too. It's true to the original movie and comics. It's pretty bloody compared to the Super Nintendo version. Uh, check it out though. It's, uh, this is definitely one of the uh, top tier games that should be in every Genesis collection here as well. Now this game ran me back about, I think $70, but it's worth every penny and you're about to see why. So check it out here. Excellent. Now right off the bat with the background music starting right now, the game and the music matched so well. It's very dark, sinister, high octane, uh, just just everything that you would think of when you think of Robocop versus the Terminator. And they did a good job too. Uh, as you will see here in the next few moments, the animation is so smooth. Uh, very impressed, even for today's standards. Uh, it's, it, it's one of the Genesis' best uh, games to depict the power of what the Genesis can do. Uh, and the game also <laughs> reflects the actual, you know, uh, Robocop theme very well. Dark, sinister, blood and gore, guts, explosions as you can see here. The reflections of the gunshots on his chest, the beautiful red uh, Detroit skylines parallaxing as you walk past. Uh, just everything about this game screamed beautiful. Uh, the only issue I think is because the sprite of your character is so big, while beautiful, you are also a larger hitbox, so you get hit and damaged pretty easily. But thankfully, uh, there's energy canisters really, you know, in abundance. But uh, as you progress later towards the end of the game, it gets difficult and you, you see less of it. Uh, but in general, the game is definitely worth picking up if you can find it. it. It goes for around 60 to 70, but it's totally worth it if you can pick one up. And uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't know what else to say other than it's it's a it's an awesome game, awesome game. So that was my second Nomad unboxing. Uh, I was really excited to finally record this video just because this is one of my favorite consoles of all time, being the hybrid uh, console that it is with TV and you know portability way before the Switch was even a thing. Um, yeah, so leave a like if you like the video, or even better, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this in the future. Thanks, have a good one.